What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what I'm gonna go over is the qualitative characteristics of financial information. And it may actually be a couple of videos, depending on how long these explanations are gonna be. I'm guessing it probably be multiple videos, multiple parts. So, quick little review from the previous videos. We had this flow chart here for a financial accounting system. So we have an entity, financial data. That financial data gets put through a financial accounting system or through a specific set of rules. We mentioned it's called GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And then you're gonna get financial information, more specifically, financial statements. And I mentioned the four different financial statements we're going to be looking at in this course. Balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, and statement of retained earnings. And so what we're going to be doing in this video is going a little bit more deep into this part here, into the financial information. And more specifically, the question that we're going to answer is what qualities should this financial information have in order for it to be useful for these external users? And there's actually six qualities that we're gonna go through. And so the first quality is relevance, second quality, faithful representation, third quality, the financial information has to be comparable, fourth, verifiable, fifth, timely, and then sixth, it has to be understandable. And so what's gonna be happening is that I'm gonna go into more detail for each of these six qualities and explain what they mean. And there's gonna be definitions sometimes within them. So uh, yeah, these set of videos may take a little bit of time, but highly important, it's a really big chance that you're gonna be tested on this stuff on your midterm and on your exam. Now, a couple of things I wanna mention before we get into detail on each of these. Notice that I group these in a certain way. So I put like one and two here and then three, four, five, six. That wasn't by accident. A lot of times you'll see textbooks grouping these qualities. And so these first two are usually called the fundamental qualities. Now, not all textbooks, not all profs are gonna group these. Sometimes they'll just list all six, but a lot of textbooks will group them. So these two are called the fundamental qualities. So they're pretty much the most important. And then these four here, they're called the enhancing qualities. So these are the fundamental, kind of the foundational qualities and then these four enhance these right so that's the first thing i want to mention second thing i want to mention is that these six qualities here are based on the 2010 standards so before 2010 this list was actually different it was a list created in 1989 and then what happened was some time passed and then in 2010 they decided to update the list. So this is based on the 2010 standards. And what I think is going to happen is they're going to further update this list at some point, in my opinion. Because what you're going to find when I'm explaining these is that there's going to be a lot of carryover. There's going to be stuff that I mention maybe in relevance. And then I'm going to mention almost the same stuff in timely. And you're going to think to yourself, wait, didn't he mention that in relevance? And unfortunately, it's something that you're going to have to deal with. It's something I got to deal with as well when I'm trying to explain this to you as best as possible. So you may run into scenarios in your course where there's going to be multiple qualities that are violated. But as long as you can explain them, then, uh, then you should be fine about why they are violated. And I think once I go into specifics on each one, you're gonna get a better understanding of how to explain it. So yeah, it's just something you're gonna have to deal with. There may be some carryover, uh, and it's, in, it's why it's my opinion that this list is probably gonna get updated 
so that there is less carryover, a little less confusion about which quality is actually being violated. But anyway, that's just my two cents. But the more scenarios you go through, the more questions that you do regarding these qualities, the better you'll get at recognizing which qualities are followed or which qualities are violated.